Hey guys, today we're going to review systems of equations and inequalities. So a lot of these answers can be checked by substituting your answer back in algebraically or by graphing any slope intercept form equation on the calculator and double checking it that way. Let's look at graphs first. So we have three types of scenarios for a system of equations. The first one is when we get one solution, that's just one intersection point which this one has, and the solution would be negative three, negative three. So let's look at their equations. I'm going to highlight this first one in green. That equation has a y-intercept at zero, and it looks like it has a slope of one. So that equation would just be y equals x. And then this second equation, I'll highlight it in pink. Looks like it has a y-intercept at three and the slope is up two over one. So that equation would be y equals two x plus three. So these lines intersected because their slopes were different. And as long as you have different slopes, you are going to get a one solution equation. It doesn't matter what your y-intercept is. It could be different or it could be the same. To get a one solution, you just need to make sure that the slopes are different. Okay, the next scenario is a no solution equation. These lines are never going to intersect and let's look at why. So this first line, I'll highlight it in green. Looks like we have a y-intercept of five and a slope of one. So that equation would be y equals x plus five. And then this second line has a y-intercept of one and it also has a slope of one. So that equation would be y equals x plus one. So these lines have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So when you have the same slope and different y-intercepts, you're gonna get that no solution because those lines are never gonna intersect with the same slope in a different y-intercept. Then the last scenario is infinite solutions. As you can see, these lines are on top of each other. Just, they just have the same equation of y equals x. They're the same exact line, so they're gonna have the same slope and the same y-intercept, and that's why we get infinite solutions. So that is a system of equations graphically. We also learned how to solve systems algebraically, and we learned two methods, substitution and elimination. Let's start with substitution. So to get the solution to this system by substitution, you want to isolate a variable in one equation and substitute it into the other equation. So this bottom equation already has x isolated and x equals y minus seven. So in the top equation, I can replace x with y minus seven and then solve for y. So instead of x in that top equation, I'm gonna put what it equals in the bottom equation, which is y minus seven, and then we'll put plus eight y equals two. And now I'm gonna solve this equation for y. I'm going to combine y and eight y to make 9y minus 7 equals 2, and then I'll add 7, and I get 9y equals 9, divided by 9, and I get y equals 1. So there's the first part to my solution. Now I need to find x, and I know x equals y minus 7, and I just found y, it's 1, so x will equal, I'm going to replace y with 1. So one minus seven is X. So X is negative six. So now I have the solution to this equation. It is negative six, one. Another method we learned to solve system of equations is elimination. So this is where you eliminate one of the variables and the way you do that is you line up the variables in both equations and then create matching or opposite coefficients if necessary to eliminate one of the variables. So if you notice the y variables, well, first of all, they're already lined up. 
and the y variables have that same negative one coefficient. So I just need to make one of them be positive y so that when I combine them, it'll make a zero pair. So I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by a negative one. So I'm going to rewrite the top equation. That'll stay the same. 3x minus y equals 26. And then the bottom equation, I'm going to distribute the negative 1. I'm basically just going to change the sign of everything. And I get positive 2x plus y equals 24. And now I'm going to add the equations together. And the y's eliminate. 3x plus 2x is 5x. And 26 plus 24 is 50. And then I divide by 5, and I get that x equals 10. So now I just need to find y. So I'm going to substitute back into one of the original equations. You can choose either one. I'm going to do the top one just because it had less negatives. So I'm going to replace the x there with 10. So it'll be 3 times 10 minus y equals 26. So 30 minus y equals 26. I would subtract 30 and get negative y equals negative 4 and then divide by a negative 1 so y equals 4. So now I have the solution to this system. It is 10, 4. Okay, let's talk about writing systems next. So the most important part of writing a system from a word problem is defining your variables. After you say what the two variables, such as x and y, represent, it is much easier to write your equations. So let's look at this first one. It says, Jesse bought two kolaches and nine donuts for $18. Hillary bought four kolaches and two donuts for $12. What is the price of a kolache? So they are talking about how many kolaches and donuts they both bought. So those are going to be my two variables. I'm going to let x be the number of kolaches. and y be the number of donuts. And now that I have x and y, it should be easy to write the equation. I'm gonna write this one first, two kolaches and nine donuts for $18. So kolaches was x and donuts was y. So that equation would be two x plus nine y equals 18. And then the other equation is four kolaches and two donuts. That would be four X plus two Y is $12. Okay, and you can solve this system using substitution or elimination. I'm gonna use elimination since these are already lined up. They're both in standard form. And I know if I multiply this top equation by a negative two, that will easy, easily eliminate the x's here. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by a negative 2 and rewrite it down here. Get negative 4x minus 18y equals negative 2 times 18 is negative 36. And then I'm going to rewrite the bottom equation. I didn't change it at all. And now I'm ready to combine these equations to eliminate the x's. And negative 18y plus 2y is negative 16. And negative 36 plus 12 is negative 24. And then I would divide by negative 16. And then I'm going to let the calculator change this to a decimal since we're talking about the price. I want it as a decimal. Negative 24 divided by negative 16 is negative 1.5. So y equals negative, oh, sorry, positive, because it was a negative divided by negative. Positive 1.5 or $1.50. Okay, the question was asking, what is the price of a kolache? Remember, kolaches were x, and we just found y. So now I need to go back and find x to answer this question. So I'm gonna plug back into the bottom equation to find x. So it'll be 4x plus two times, I just found y, it was $1.50 equals 12. So it'll be 4x plus 
3 equals 12, and then we would subtract 3 and get 4x equals 9, and then divide by 4, and 9 divided by 4 is 225. So that's the price of a kolachi, $2.25. Okay, let's read this next question. As I'm reading it, think about what the two things X and Y are gonna represent this time. It says, together, Alex and Paul have 15 candy bars. Paul has three more than half of Alex's candy bars. How many candy bars does Paul have? So we're talking about candy bars and we're specifically talking about how much Alex and Paul have. And the question is even asking how much does Paul have? So I'm gonna let X be Alex's candy bars. And I will let Y be Paul's candy. Okay, so let's see if we can write the equation to show this situation. Now it says together Alex and Paul have 15 candy bars. So that would be X plus Y equals 15. And then it says Paul, so y he has, so equals three more than half of Alex's candy bars. So let's start with half of Alex's candy bars. That would just be one half x, since Alex is x, and three more than that means I have to add three to it. Okay, so now I need to solve this equation. And to me, it looks like substitution is the easiest because down here they tell me y equals 1 half x plus 3. So I'm going to replace y right there with 1 half x plus 3. So I get x plus 1 half x plus 3, since I replaced y with 1 half x plus 3, equals 15. So x plus one half would be one and a half or just 1.5x plus three equals 15. And then we could subtract three and I get 1.5x equals 12. And then I'm gonna divide by 1.5 and 12 divided by 1.5 is eight. But we are not done because the question said how many candy bars does Paul have? And we just found X, which is Alex. So I'm going to find the number that Paul has Y by substituting in to the equation Y equals one half X plus three. I'll do Y equals one half. I just found X, it was eight plus three. So Y equals four plus three. So Y equals seven. So how many candy bars does Paul have? He has seven candy bars. Last thing we are going over is graphing systems of inequalities. Just make sure that you graph them when they're in slope intercept form. That's the only form that you can determine the inequality sign in. And I put little visual right there if you're having a hard time remembering what the graph of each inequality sign looks like. So let's start by converting these to slope intercept form. This first equation, 2x minus y is greater than two. To convert it to slope intercept form, I would subtract 2x first, and I would get negative y is greater than negative 2x or plus two. And then the last step to convert to slope intercept form is divide everything by a negative one. And I get y, I would flip the inequality sign since I'm dividing by a negative. So it's gonna be y is less than negative two x divided by negative one is two x and two divided by negative one is negative two. So let's go ahead and graph that inequality. I have a y intercept at negative two and a slope of two, so we can go up to right one, or down to left one. And then the inequality sign was less than, so it would be a dashed line through these points. And since it's less than, we would shade below this line.
Okay, now I need to graph the other inequality, which is also in standard form, so let's convert it to slope-intercept form first. So I would subtract x and get negative 2y is less than or equal to negative x plus 2. And then I would divide by a negative 2, and now y is by itself, and since I divided by a negative, I have to flip the inequality sign, so it's going to become greater than or equal to negative x divided by negative 2. That slope would simplify to 1 half, and then 2 divided by negative 2 would give me a y-intercept of negative 1. So I'm going to graph this line now, 1 half x minus 1, y-intercept of negative 1, and then a slope of 1 means I go up 1, right 2, and you can also go down one, left two. And then the inequality sign was greater than or equal to, so that's going to be a solid line. And greater than means that I shade above this line. So my solution set is right there in that overlapping region, the solution set to the system of inequalities. It means it has to make both of the inequalities true. So that would be this overlapping region, never on a dotted line, but it could be this part of the solid line right here since that is also shaded by the other inequality and it's true for the blue inequality too because it's a solid line there.